Okay, it's Goldman here again. I'm just going to explain the uh, relationship between threshold A and threshold B using my famous whiteboard session as an example of the uh, relationship. So over here we've got threshold A and along the top, along the top, we've got threshold B. And we've got null smack bang in the middle of threshold B, which is where it should be. And I'm using figures like minus 1, minus 3, and minus 7 to represent under null. Notice I'm not using a hard number like 48 or 50 or 60. It's null, or it's under, or it's over. Now, down here, you look at uh, threshold A of 30, and you draw the line up, you'll see that you can, in fact, get to about minus 7 or 7 under null threshold A of 30. At a threshold A of about 60, you should be able to get a threshold B of about under 3, 3 under. And at about 90 of threshold A, you'll be, you'll be pushed to get a uh, 1 under null um, from an under point of view. So if you were going over null, for example, um, you'd get the same sort of figures on the other side. So at 30, you could probably get up to a plus 7 or a 7 over null. At 60, you'd probably get around a 3 over null. And at 90, you'd be lucky to get there about to get about a 1 over null with 1 in the middle, with null in the middle. Now this is a very important relationship. So what it shows is as you're going up in threshold A, your usable band of threshold B decreases. So at 90 you've only got about one either way of null and at 30 you've got probably plus or minus seven um, around null. So that's a very, very important relationship. At 90 with threshold A you will get a lot of EMI creeping in so what you normally do is crank that up and drop it back till it's quiet. Conversely, if it's a bad EMI day, the best way to do it is to drop your threshold A to 30 and therefore expand your threshold B level, which in fact reduces the EMI because you're only getting half the EMI through. The EMI is a form of a sine wavy thing. You only get half of it through because you're enhancing the, uh, the uh, rising pitch of this side or you're enhancing the, ri the rising pitch of this side of the EMI signal. So you're only getting about half the uh, EMI through that you would otherwise get. Um, so that's very important. Now, from a depth perspective, you'll see here that um, if you're at null, you're going to get a certain depth, and the red line is if you go under null for small targets, your depth will actually increase to a point here. But if you follow this line down, um, you'll find that the depth on small targets decreases significantly. Conversely, if you go over null with your threshold B, your depth on large targets increases, but this, your sensitivity to small targets drops right off. So it's, it's also very important to understand. The further you go over null, the sensitivity to the small targets drops off, so you get much less depth. And if you go over null, your sensitivity to large targets drop, uh, increases, but sensitivity small targets, as you can see here, drops right off. So that is why you never, with a small coil, go above null. Which you'll find, you'll see here, with a small coil the red line, if you're above null, your sensitivity to small targets is, in fact, dropping off all the way down here. So it's important, so when you first turn your QED on, that's why it's important to get to work out what your, uh, your null is threshold B. 50 is the default and if you do a factory reset it, you set at 50 and your threshold A is in fact, your threshold B null is in fact about 48. Well that means you're, bit, you're 2 over null already. Therefore from this chart you can see that you've, you've decreased your sensitivity to small targets. Well what you really want is up here somewhere. That's why you go under null for small targets with a small coil. And with a really big coil you go over null to uh, increase the sensitivity to large targets. It's very important to understand that. Okay, I'll do another session a bit later on on something else like game.